Noddy's new friend. It was a quiet day in Toyland, and Noddy was driving around looking for something exciting to do. Mr. Plod stepped in front of his car, holding up his hand. Stop! he said. I have to move my traffic cones. I put them in the street so I could direct all the caravans from Bink's Circus around the town. A circus? cried Noddy. Now that is exciting. Can I follow the caravans? If you must, said Mr. Plod, clearing the last cone. Noddy drove for some way, but there were still no caravans. Then he saw a funny looking person with a floppy hat, long ears, and brown fur sitting by the side of the road saying, Ow! 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 What's the matter? asked Noddy. I fell from a caravan, said the creature. I hurt my leg. Ow! What are you? asked Noddy. Do you belong to the circus? I'm a bunky, was the answer. Half a monkey and half a bunny. Can't you see my rabbit ears? Noddy had no idea there was such a creature, but he helped the bunky to his feet. Shall I drive after the circus? No, cried the bunky. I don't want to go back to the circus. Please, they were horrid to me. Nobody wants me there. Noddy felt sorry for his new friend and said the bunky could stay at his house until his leg was better. The bunky loved Noddy's house and wanted to repay his kindness. I'll clean your house from top to bottom. I'll cook your dinner. I'll wash and polish your car. I'll weed your garden. I'll do your shopping. Good gracious, said Noddy. You needn't do all that. Oh, please, cried the bunky. So Noddy let him. Next morning, the bunky's leg was better, and he polished Noddy's car until it gleamed. It just finished when Tessie Bear arrived and asked Noddy to take her into town. Noddy's been very kind to me, said the bunky. I really want to help him. If you're his friend, I want to help you too. When you want anything at all, just tell me, and I'll do it for you. Tessie couldn't think of anything, but the bunky was so keen to be helpful, she thought again. Well, she said, I wish we had a lamp post outside our house. Every night my Uncle Bear bumps into the tree by our front gate and goes, Ouch! That wakes us up. A lamp post? Aha! murmured the bunky. And as Noddy and Tessie drove off to town, it was his turn to think hard. Next morning, the bunky kept yawning as he made Noddy his boiled egg. There was a knock at the front door, and Mr. Plod strode in. Noddy, said Mr. Plod crossly, do you know anything about four missing lamp posts? Last night, one went from outside Miss Pink Cat's gate, and one from outside my gate, and we both heard the noise of a car. Well, it wasn't my car, cried Noddy. I didn't take those lamp posts. Please go away, Mr. Plod. My egg's going cold. The bunky jumped up from his chair and marched up to Mr. Plod. Yes, go away. He was about to bite Mr. Plod's nose when Tessie Bear ran in through the front door. Noddy, she cried. There are four lamp posts in our front garden. Wherever did... Oh, oh hello, Mr. Plod. So, that's where those lamp posts have gone, said Mr. Plod. Noddy, you'll hear from me again. He strode out, and the bunky pranced after him, making faces. Horrid fellow! I should have knocked his helmet off! Noddy had something to ask. Bunky, those lamp posts, surely you didn't. But the bunky dashed out, saying he had to weed the garden. Oh, he must have done it, Tessie, said Noddy. He collected all those lamp posts in my car last night to light up your garden. The bunky was weeding so fast that Noddy had to dodge flying weeds as he tried to demand the truth. Then Bumpy Dog leapt over the wall. He was thrilled to see Noddy and bounded up to him so eagerly that he knocked him into the flower bed. 
How dare you attack my friend? yelled the monkey. Then he picked up a clod of earth and hurled it at Bumpy Dog. Before Noddy could explain that Bumpy Dog belonged to Tessie and was his friend too, the monkey and the dog leapt at each other. They battled all over Noddy's garden. They hurled earth about. They uprooted some flowers and bashed the rest to the ground. They both landed on the garden seat at the same time and smashed it into two. Plants and grass flew all about as Noddy finally caught Bumpy Dog. You stupid dog! He raged. And you're as bad, Bunky. You spoilt my flowers and broken my seat. You ruined my garden. I'm sorry. Please forgive me," wailed the monkey, racing off down the road. "I'll put your garden right again. I'm sorry." When Noddy arrived home later that day, Tessie Bear was waiting for him with a flower in a pot. "Oh, that's so kind, Tessie," said Noddy. "Let's go straight out and put it in my garden." When they walked around the side of the house, they had a great shock. Noddy's garden was beautiful again. All the flower beds were neat and tidy and full of plants. There was even a garden seat. Noddy stared at it. That's not a garden seat, he said. That's a park bench. It's that monkey again. He must have stolen that bench and all the flowers. Where is he? The monkey crept out from behind the seat. I, I didn't steal them," he whined. "The park keeper said they belonged to everybody. <laughs> That means they're yours. So I brought them home for you." Noddy was cross with him for causing so much trouble. He made him get in his car and drove him to the police station to own up to Mr. Plod about the lamp posts and the park bench. Mr. Plod was standing outside his station, reading a letter. And looking very serious, as Noddy's car pulled up, he looked straight at the monkey. "Aha!" he said, "the very creature." "This is Bunky," said Noddy, climbing out of the car. "He's half a bunny and half a monkey." "Oh no," said Mr. Plod. "He is all monkey." He reached out to the monkey's hat and whipped it from his head. The rabbit ears came with it; they were sewn onto the hat. Noddy and Tessie Bear gasped with astonishment. Then Mr. Plod explained that he'd just had a letter from the circus, warning him about the naughty monkey. They'd had enough of his tricky, mischievous ways, and thrown him out of their caravan. But the monkey had sneaked into the driving seat of Noddy's car, and he drove away before the others could reach him. Come back! Yelled Noddy. He's taken my car. Noddy and Tessie trudged up the road to Noddy's house. From the garage, they heard, "Bop bop." The monkey had brought Noddy's car back home. He'd only borrowed your car, said Tessie, because he was frightened of Mister Plod. Oh, he really was a monkey, but I liked him. I liked him. Laughed Noddy. I hope he's got a new disguise. Up on the roof, a furry brown figure wearing a headdress of flowers from Noddy's garden, and a skirt made from grass and flowers, watched Noddy and Tessie walk round to the garden. Then the flunkey swung across the roof and down the wall. In the garden, Noddy laughed so much about his friend's tricks that the bell on his hat began to ring. As the flunkey ran down the road, he could still hear the bell ring and ring and ring. Noddy, Noddy, the little man with the red and yellow car. Noddy, Noddy, his tinkling bell means he's the happiest little fellow we know. As big as Tubby and Mr. Plot and all his special friends, it's sixpence an adventure and he'll take you home again. And now it's time for Noddy to wave and say goodbye. It's time.
tired and sleepy and nodding his head. He's ready to curl himself up in bed and see what tomorrow brings. For oh, nodding, nodding, nodding.